welcome to The One Inside, an internal family systems podcast. I'm your host, Tammy Sallenberger. I'm excited that you and all of your parts have taken time to be with me and all of my parts. If you are a coach, a client, a therapist, if you are in business or education, and you're curious about the IFS model, you are in the right place. Now, let's see what happens on today's podcast. Hey everyone, today's episode is with Simon DeSonia. Simon is the head honcho of IFS Australia. We met in 2018 when we both presented at the IFS annual conference. He was one of the first people I talked to about doing a podcast. He was super supportive and encouraging, and I knew I wanted to get him on eventually. When we first talked about him doing a podcast, I assumed, as is typical with all the other podcasts, we would talk about his journey with IFS or some main things that he's passionate about, the model, and we would talk about his passion to bring IFS to Australia. I was also really curious about how he integrates all the other models he's really into. There's um, quite a list on the internal family systems training Australia.com page. So that was kind of the plan, but that is not what happened. It is January 2020 and the fires are destroying Australia are in the news and in our hearts and in our minds, and it's pretty overwhelming. Um, So there's a part of me that wants to give you a little bit of a warning. I'm not sure if it's needed or not, but um, this episode just feels really different to me. It feels heavy. It's political. It's hard to hear. And the tone, there's just a tone to Simon into our conversation. There are parts that are silly and there are parts that are fun and there are lots of really good gems, but there's just this heavy and overwhelming feeling, I think. Just to give you a heads up, in the first three minutes, I make a joke about our surroundings, sort of what's uh, kind of surrounding, like, a, you know, I like to hear what pe- what's around people and sort of where everybody's at in the world. And I make a joke about I'm in my son's room because I'm running a really professional uh, gig over here. So uh, I'm in my son's room and there's a Spider-Man backpack behind me and there's Nerf guns. And that gets us off and running when I mention Nerf guns. We don't talk about gun control, I promise. So let me give you a heads up about what's to come. And maybe this is unnecessary, but there's a part of me that just wants to do this. Um, I guess there's a part of me that wants to protect you as my listener. And yeah, so I'm just going to, I'm just feeling into that, that there are some parts that want to protect you. Um, The first 20 minutes are pretty political around climate change. From 20 to 30, we talk about theories of change and adult development. And then from 30 on, uh, Simon gives us these two other C words. I write them in the show notes because I didn't know what they were and I had to go check out the spelling. And then that leads us into this conversation about living in contradiction, living in polarity, um, living in the light and dark of our world and how we try to make sense of ourselves and our world and other people living in the midst of that. Simon, towards the end of the episode, he says, our invitation is that the self-energy in us is more powerful than the parts of other people who are trying to distress us, the parts of other people who distress our world. Our self-energy is more powerful than those parts of other people. He talks about uh, we need an, an adult in the room, especially around like politics, and then thinking of how that applies internally, that oftentimes when our, our protectors are often, you know, these little kids that are in distress and what they need is an, is an adult in their room. And that's what our self is. I don't know about you guys, um, but even as a 40 something year old, I often think, man, I really need an adult. Um, and uh, yeah. I guess sometimes I'm the adult. It doesn't feel that way, but um, but I like that. So that we need an adult in the in the room, and that we have that. We have that resource in our self. I like the idea of asking, especially in light of climate change and political things that are very overwhelming and distressing. How do we make sense of ourselves and our world and other people? And it's, it's such a good question to really tap into our own spirituality that helps us helps me feel grounded and gives me a sense of. Um, who I am and how I fit into the world. 
Um, Simon says, he says two quotes that I love in different places in the episode. He says, right next to the hurt, you have love. And I like that because right now, especially in Australia, there is this tone of hurt. And um, so right next to the hurt, you have love. And then I'll end with this. I really like this. Simon says, um, that's funny. (laughs) Simon states, how about I say it that way? Simon states, a part of me is hopeless. Another part says, you can't destroy life. That's pretty good, right? A part of me is hopeless. Another part of me says you can't destroy life. On that, I will leave you, my friends. I'll talk to you soon. Enjoy this one. Hi. Hello. Hi, hon. Hi. Hi, hon. Did you say hi, hon? I said hi, hi. Oh, I thought you said hi, hon. I was like, (laughs) aw. That would be um, maybe at the end of the call we could get to that. We build up, you know, to you know, just kind of create a level of uh, that familiarity. That you know, kind of, oh yeah, you've been at my place. I've been at your place. Yeah. Yeah, we're not there yet. So right now it's just hello. <clears throat> That's right. Hello, Miss Tammy. Hello, Mr. Simon. So I can't call you Bud. So at the end of the call, don't you- do that. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Yeah, yeah, that's that's kind of like odd. That's like, am I like an ear cleaner or something? Is that what you've mistaken me for? Yeah, we, or a, a headphone set or something. Yeah, a bud is an ear cleaner. What is that? Yeah, that's right. Mm, earbuds. Yeah. Oh, an earbud. Oh, it's so funny because I was like, I've never called anybody. Like sometimes like my son is eight. So I'll call like other little boys like buddy. Like I never Mm -hmm. call him buddy, but I'll call like other little boys buddy. It was so Uh funny when I was, I was um, typing that message to you and I was like, hey, bud. I was like, that's really weird. I never call anybody bud. But I was like, I felt like this, like, hey, buddy. Like I wanted to like hit you on the shoulder. Like, I don't know. Mm. It's interesting. Yeah. I bruise really easily. I'm really <laughs> glad you didn't do that. Yeah. When do I get to see you in person again? Good question. Mm. Um, when you c- not the, uh, you mean like at the next IFS conference or are you or, coming to Australia? Or you're coming here. I don't know. Am I coming there or are you, or are you coming here? Um, good question. I um I I don't think I'm going to the states in this coming in this current year the year that we've just started, um maybe the year next the following year I I you know I'm trying to be judicious about the air flight you know kind of there's there's that and you know, also just being busy and you know wanting to not you know yeah well, it's life. not an easy flight mm-hmm. I have a friend that her family lives in Australia Mm -hmm. and um, yeah, it's not an easy flight. So it's not like, you know, if I want to go to the conference, I can just take a couple hour plane ride. Easy Mm. peasy, Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but not easy easy peasy, peasy. easy peasy, not easy peasy for you. Do they say easy peasy in Australia? Yeah. 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 We do. actually. What would be a better term, like an easy peasy? What would be easy peasy in Australia? Oh, I don't know. No stress. Um. <laughs> no stress. I'm loving the background. Like you have a beautiful professional background. I have a background of a Spider-Man backpack yeah. and mm. some Nerf guns. That's how yeah. we. Ro- that's how we roll in the states. Guns everywhere. Yeah. That's terrible. <laughs> that's true. Hmm. <laughs> unfortunately yeah 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 no that's one of the really foreign things about your culture um that, that you know kind of leaves the rest of the world scratching our, our heads just going what is it about this aggression that is mm. disowned you know combined with a puritanism that says you know you couldn't show a part of your body you know kind of uh, that you know I, you know one right next to the other you know right it's bizarre well i wonder if that's almost like the uh original polarization of parts the puritan mm-hmm. and the mm-hmm. aggressive violent or beautiful part polarizations yeah and it, it really comes across like that you know kind of the, the, you know like it, it's like whatever you do that um uh, I, I don't know like you can really be a pretty 
shabby, shonky person, but if you stand up and say, God bless the country, um, then everyone kind of stands up and salutes. So it's like their brain just switches off. And it's like, mm. Mm, what? You know, that it, it, it's so confusing to the rest of the world, mm. you know, that you would have that. And, you know, the aggression is part of it. And, you know, and, and the unquestionable right to, if you're making money, you're a good person which we also have a bit of here, but nothing like what you got. You guys are specialists. You know, you're really high accomplished kind of uh, sophisticated thinkers or not thinkers or something with that, you know, like, Oh, you must be a good person. You've made a lot of money. I can get away with anything now. Mm, you know, something about the value, of- value of making money, money equals success equals good person or money equals good person. Yeah, that's the shorthand is like it's all compacted in together. Like, oh, well, God's rewarded me or something. I don't know. You know, like, oh, you know, the Quaker thing, you know, doing well by doing good. But, you know, Quakers mm-hmm. at least had some notion that maybe we shouldn't have slavery and that, you know, some amount of silence each day was a damn good thing. And, mm. you know, I mean, even among the Quakers, of course, it took a while for the slavery idea to kind of really go off, you know, but they were the ones who really led on it, good on them. How do you know all this? Uh, I don't know. I read books. It's uh, <laughs> a thing. I, I, do you have a book in, I, in your background? I can't see any books. Where are the books, girl? Uh, the books are over oh. here. Oh, Let's good. See, here's okay. the... You've got some in the room. Thank yeah, goodness. there's you, lots you know, of you, books. Thank goodness for that. You must read. It's the only thing that's going to save your soul. I, I hate to break that to you. You know, kind of some poetry, you know, a little bit of history. Uh, you know, yeah, some, in, in this book, in this room, I've got dog man comic books books and uh-huh. that's a start. and fly guy so right. where we become friends with a fly and mm. share meals together uh, well we do that in australia too we have a lot of flies <laughs> <laughs> yeah so maybe we, we we're sharing more than we're kind of uh, on different continents who knows yeah. yeah we have more in common than than yeah. not maybe Maybe so, yeah. Well, you've had a big bit of your country over in California burst into flames and we're kind of really taking the lead with that right now. So it's very distressing, actually. Yeah. So can we talk about that? Because it's that's what everyone mm-hmm. over here is talking about. And I'm curious what mm. how you're doing and what you're seeing and um, what you want to tell the listeners about from like firsthand someone who's living in Australia right now. Well, I'm living in Australia, but I'm fortunately in one of the cities where the fires are not so very close right now. But it's certainly a big part of our consciousness um, and our, I don't know, I'll talk for myself, I guess. But, you know, if we think about or have a sense of your own feeling space, you know, your own subtle awareness it's like there's, uh, you know, it's overwhelming, really. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, it's very distressing that so much uh, land can be burned, so many people, you know, you know more than 25 people, 26 people have died. Uh, 2,000 houses have been burnt down, you know, really um, just enormous number of animals and habitat have been destroyed. Um, and it's incomprehensible, actually. Uh, yeah. it, it's kind of just a sense of shock and dismay and also... It kind of, even though, uh, you know, it's very touching to see how communities can come together and have come together, and they really do, uh, and the hopelessness of central government to really, you know, they've been appalling here, as well as which they're of, um, you're very much in the thrall owned by the coal, you know, kind of fossil fuel industries and transnationals so you know i mean when you have that uh, you know we end up with a government of client uh, climate denial and uh, you know even as things are burning they're saying oh no when you know they still don't have a climate policy mm-hmm. you know they've, they've they've blocked and stopped things for more than sort of 15 years mm-hmm. the conservatives in this country and their funders uh, you know they've just been puppets for this it's so sad i have parts that are just furious at you know, kind of the interest of big business, which has no soul and no feeling for life, really. Mm. It, it has feeling only for, well, if it has feeling, I don't know. It has self-interest. 
Yeah. And and this is what the cost of that looks like. And I fear this is only, a, you know, Australia is the driest continent, but every country in the world is going to have, is already having extreme weather events. It's not like this is not been sort of coming up. Australia is so very dry and now it's drier again. And it's ferocious. Really. It's hard to grieve because we're not in, at the end of it. Right. There's no closure you know we're just in the kind of early middle part of the summer so it's been burning since september uh, which you know kind of we're the other way around you know if you think about that you know december is officially start of summer i mean i think that makes total sense that the there's a parts of you i guess i guess i guess what i'm curious about is how you how you deal with your parts that are reacting that's what i'm curious about mm. Yeah. Well, I, I, I guess there's a lot of distress, a lot of distressed parts that feel, you know, very young and kind of frightened, mm. to tell you the truth. And there are parts that are kind of seeing animals that are, you know, wounded, injured or killed, you know, that are terrified, really. Mm. Mm. Because, you know, all well, life connects to life. Mm -hmm. To see habitat destroyed just as much you know uh, mm -hmm. and and uh, trying to spend some time with that knowing that actually you can let parts know that they're safe here now and there are other parts that can say yes and what happens you know when I look at my children I'm looking at them thinking what world are they going to have you know will they even have children that's a choice a lot of people are you know I, you know People, you know, older than my kids are just coming up into their early, you know, kind of late teens, early 20s. You know, it's like, oh, in a few years, uh, naturally enough, I mean, you have kids, you mm -hmm. know. Uh, it's like, oh, this is a life thing, you know, that just flows through us. It's not always a choice, but life wants life. And, you know, what world are they venturing into? Yeah, it feels very over. It feels like, like you said, it feels overwhelming. And as you're talking, I'm getting a sense of just helplessness and hopelessness. Yeah, part of me is quite hopeless, sure, or a number of parts, I'm guessing. And another, you know, there are other parts that say you can't destroy energy, you can't actually destroy life. You know, the psyche is endlessly nimble and full of energy and creativity and mm. dreams and possibility and you know life evolves and life goes on mm. life will have new shapes and, and things that come to their end also come again in different mm. ways mm. and that applies also for things that are undigested horrors as well as uh, unmitigated unquestionable beauty mm. I know a lot of people are like, what can we do? Like, what can we do over here mm. to support you? You know, look, I really appreciate that you're, you know, that you are touched by what's happening and others are touched. And, and you know, unfortunately, it makes such, you know, ridiculously cinematic good fodder for our news broadcasts. And mm. part of me says it's important that people know. And there's another part that says uh, anything that makes people too anxious, more anxious in this world where fear and anxiety are played on, you know, in such a pre-thought way. In, a, in You know, like a lot of our politics is flooded by people quite consciously playing on people's anxieties and vulnerability and insecurity. Mm. And, and, you know, it makes people reactive and it makes people want to rush towards simple answers and strong men in, in, in their politicians. It's happening all over the world. And, yeah. you know, so, so I guess I want to just temper whatever, you know, people's natural sympathy to be able to say, actually look in your own communities, go and, uh, you know, turn over your politicians where they're in the thrall, in the hand of the people who are not really looking after the interest of the country, of what's best about, you know, the American project, which is, you know, such a thrilling notion. It's really being emptied out, you know, of, of its possibility and of 
you know, the beacon of light and hope that it showed to the world. The Enlightenment project, you know, really has had its space or hopefully still does again. But it needs new checks and balances, obviously. Uh, you know, I see I have parts that I love ideas and things and loves history too and loves knowing that people are connected and actually when people are in a corner that they will really look after each other because we do. I see it again and again. Yeah, that's the the beauty. It sounds like that you can see in this horror is their beauty with people supporting and loving each other in the midst of the horror. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, I mean, if you want to do something, you know, it kind of like, look, it's fabulous. Of course, you know, we've, uh, you know, I, I know that sometimes it's easier to, you know, give money and just make sure if you give money that it's not to, to some small thing, but to, you know, I don't know, the Red Cross or something, which is, a, you know, incredible operator. It's It's kind of like here it is here now in this place, in this country, and, you know, thankfully people have been incredibly generous, but now it's a problem. How do you actually get the money out? You know, whereas they should have been buying water bombers and, you know, doing, you know, kind of putting central coordination and training people and having paid firefighters, not just volunteer people who are getting so exhausted. Mm. You know, they, they, but we knew this 10 years ago, 15 years ago. You know, there are reports, people pulling out saying by 2020, weather events and, you know, kind of bushfires are going to be hotter. They're going to start earlier. They're going to be more extreme. They're going to go longer. You wow. know, the windows for the hazard reduction, the back burning and so on is going to be much, much smaller. And this is exactly what's happened. So we knew. It's just that conservative governments, including, you know, what we call central or progressive government, which has also had a stint, you know, they really didn't didn't do anything about this. They had their report and they did nothing that's heartbreaking and perhaps sort of furious yeah. and appalled and, you know, and really concerned because also, you know, where do all these people go to live now? We have climate refugees and, right. you know, we're not going to have enough money uh, to it, 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 actually, we probably have plenty of money, um, but we don't have the infrastructure and, and enough time. And I fear this is the thing, you know, people say, oh, we have eight years or 10 years or something to really make the changes to, you know, under two degrees. There are obviously a lot of people who really are just ignoring this thing, but it's kind of like, actually, we need to put that investment in early, really, to start things changing how we live our lives, actually. Yeah. All right. Of course, you can say, oh, well, I'm just one person and one little household and so on, and each of us is. But to be really clear about it, I guess, I, I, I have parts that just say, I get that there can be hopelessness about it, and I get that there can be hope. And, and they're both alive. They're both here. You know, and, and like I said, you know, kind of like science is a friend. You know, it's not, you know, I, I, you know there's nothing more uh, helpful than a good theory and good science. And, and, you know, the, I, I have a lot of trust that we can do something and will our lives change and will our children's lives change and will we maybe not all have great big cars, you know? Yeah. Is this a problem? Maybe not. Is this one... This is going to sound kind of weird, but is this one of the reason why I... I get the impression that you have so much passion in bringing IFS to Australia. And it sounds like you have been the one that has spearheaded all the trainings and everything coming, IFS coming to Australia over the past, I don't know how many years. I'm wondering if that's part of the hope is like the more people that have self energy and learn about self energy energy and learn about their parts the more that affects everything around us. And, and there is this understanding that it even affects like the more self energy we have, it affects our environment and our energy. And so I'm wondering if that's part of what drives you to work so hard. Oh, I don't know that I work so very hard. I think a lot of people work hard. I, I think, you know, I see a lot of people working hard, but 
you know, and, and I think, you know, unfortunately, uh, you know, uh, probably a lot of people don't even get as well rewarded in, you know, I have such incredibly satisfying work. You know, I, I see clients um, and I run trainings. I really enjoy running trainings actually. And I, I like organizing things and I, I kind of like the preposterous. <laughs> what do you really, mean? Well, you know, like it, it, it's like, Oh, well, why would you do that? Or that's very risky or something. And the, and like part of me just says, Oh yeah. Okay. okay then, you know, like, well, just because no one's done it doesn't mean that it couldn't be done. And if anything, that's a bit of like, Oh yeah. Okay. Then let's see if we can, you know, uh, uh, like I say, I, I really enjoy training. Actually, I, I, I run trainings. I've run trainings for 20 something years. And, uh, you know, I like being, uh, you know, I, I started with more psychodynamic group work. And that's a really fascinating way to work. You know, like I, I really love feeding my mind and thinking about thinking and thinking about feeling and thinking and feeling what I'm thinking and thinking what I'm feeling and, you know, blah, blah, blah. I'll go on. I have parts. That they get very busy in there. But, <laughs> and, and I, you know, and then what you working in a group, you know, there's all kinds of things flowing to help learning and make it possible. And a lot of it is now, I, I guess that I feel like I came to a really deep direct knowing by just doing it a lot. You know, you get a data kind of set and you get pattern recognition and you just start to be able to feel things happening in groups as they're happening and so on. But actually it's a lot of what the polyvagal theory has really given us some beautiful language for, you know, it's, it's about being able to be, available and present and to be safe you know like we can't learn if we're not safe mm. and, and and you know that's such a key thing and it's just made it more and more important to me uh, in terms of thinking about what we do even preposterous things you know is like how do we make it safe enough it's exactly the same as what we need in the room with our clients actually before they heal, they have to get to safety, have to be down-regulated. They have to be able to perceive the unknown and the novel with curiosity. And when they can do that, they're in the place that healing is available to them. I feel like you've learned, you know a lot about a lot of different models and theories like mm -hmm. when I read about you like you just mentioned polyvagal and I'm like mm. oh I didn't know you were into that but I also I read that you were into this um the clean language and space mm -hmm. and I thought that was yeah, interesting mm. and then um coherence, coherence therapy coherence yeah coherence therapy mm. and the immunity to change yeah mm -hmm. and I was like yeah. how in the world is he are you integrating all these things? Like, is this part of your think, like a, a, your part, your thinking part just loves mm. this mm. intellectual like pursuit of all these different models? And are you just using bits and pieces of all of them? Uh, you know, language is so inadequate. You know, I, I, I just think that, that every good effective therapy and therapeutic approach has something of value and that we're fundamentally human. And if something works somewhere, it'll work in a lot of places. Nothing works everywhere. Mm. You know, I, I, I'm really interested in sense making. How do we make sense of ourselves and others and the world? That's probably the deepest thing that I've mm. found along with knowing that when we bring warmth, and curiosity and compassion to ourselves or another, that our lives become softer and grander and more whole. And, and this I didn't just hold to be, you know, an unarguable, indispensable truth. And it makes sense to me. And, and I can be with people in, you know, uh, in all kinds of ways. And I work with couples and families, but mainly with individuals. I, I love learning. 
you you know you pointed at a, a number of things I've learned and I and, and I love each of each of those. I think they're all excellent things, and and I would recommend anyone to go and do find out more about any any of those because I think to be just fluid in the moment rather than structured and strictured and you know only using a protocol or one technique or one approach or one therapeutic model of change is not so very helpful that's what i thought was interesting about is that there did seem to be a thread of what helps people change Mm-hmm. And I was mm-hmm. like, oh, that seems like something that was a something that you clearly are interested in is the idea of change. Yeah, well, I could say change, or we could also say growth, or we could say adult development, or we could say elaboration of the spirit. Oh, where did you get that one? Elaboration of the spirit. Mm. Yeah, I, I, you know, you could call it indwelling and personalization like Winnicott does. What would IFS say? IFS would say that, you know, you're really coming into self and getting to know your parts and to also know that as your parts uh, heal, as they become more known to each other and to, you know, come into awareness, into consciousness, that actually there's more space there's more internal space and that other parts become available. You know, they come online. I think IFS, it's not usually how we think about or talk about it, but I think it's developmental in that way. You know, like Keegan's work, uh, you know, adult developmental uh, kind of model, I find so helpful because we do become more elaborate. We become more complex and life is, you know, we can see it through the lens of like a teenager or we can see it through the lens of a young adult or we could see it through the lens of, you know, like a someone in their early, mid-adulthood. And it's a different lens again when you come to, you know, a maturity that says, you know, there's life and death you know, and it's part of it and there's life and death and life again. You know, and and I think it's such a it's such a gift uh, to do deep uh, transformative work, healing work with our clients. You know, with my clients, I, I I just think it's a total privilege to go into those deep spaces where they are learning about themselves and healing and elaborating. You know, they're becoming more uh, intricate to themselves and no one to themselves and that much can come in that is larger than what I bring or they bring. It's like something larger is accessed and often the relational space becomes a conduit for that. And that we could call it healing. It's a kind of healing, but it's also bringing in something that isn't yet known in the world. It's a kind of birthing, a pregnancy and a birthing. Why is this so... This is a really stupid question. (laughs) No, I don't believe in stupid questions. I I, I think simple, direct questions are pretty fine. Okay. Um, I'm curious about... Okay. I just just feel stupid saying it, but like why this is so important to you. Again, it's kind of like, what, where is that... Like you speak with such passion and it's like, I'm just staring at you like lost in your words. And I'm curious where that passion comes from or what that was, what is it about for you that this has been such a, that you've been on this journey for clearly a long time and you've gathered a ton of resources and knowledge. And I'm wondering like for you personally, Hmm. what's been the drive, what's been driving it? Hmm. Yeah, that's a good question. I don't think there's one single thing. Um, I think, you know, from my youngest memories, earliest memories, you know, there was a trying to just understand what we're here for or something or what I'm here for. Um, and to know that that felt very relevant and 
I don't know. Um, important. important. Yeah. 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 Driving, I guess. But also just being very confused. Oh. You know, yeah, like, you know, kind of painfully confused and, you know, and yeah, really, and and alive to distress. I, I was always a kid who probably was alive to that. And, you know, I'm very alive to that with my clients and I'm alive to, you know, in the world, you know, I think it's often there and uh, some awareness as well that life is short or mm. that the the veil is thin, you know, like I, 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 I feel uncomfortable. I think sometimes with people where I don't get any sense that I don't know, they're sort of anesthetized by our busy world and our consumer society and our market economy. And, you know, there's very Western kind of notions, but it's kind of like, you know what, we're all just, a, you know, a rice paper away from being unwell and our life stopping you know, and being no longer, and, you know, I, I, I don't know. I've always had an awareness about that, you know, it, it's a, a kind of painful thing at one level, but it's something I've learned to live with. And it's like, Oh yeah. I, I mean, I, I very much like laughing and I like, you know, this real aliveness of being here. It's yeah. wonderful. Yeah. I mean, I, I know you're not a stick in the mud. Like I know nope. that you're no, not you're fun and funny and, and fantastic to talk to. I know that not just from this conversation, but from when we met before. Oh yeah. Yeah. A couple of years ago. Yeah. I guess. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. That was a, yeah. I, I mean, look, I do, I enjoy life and you know, I, part of that is being alive to, uh, yeah, the shadow, you know, that here's the thing. You didn't ask me this question, but I, I feel like it just pops into mind. You know, we have these eight C's in, you know, of self. And then I kind of was thinking eight. That's a kind of odd number, I think, you know, and then I'm thinking, oh, is it just the old metric imperial kind of argument? And then, you know, and then I thought it should be 10. And then I was trying to think, what would the other two be? And, you know, two have to be C's. Okay. So I was thinking, <laughs> Okay, so so there's, you know, kind of there's this everyday time, chronos time, and then there's that special thick space, that relational connection that happens when we work deeply with people or with ourselves. Maybe you go into a more meditative kind of softness and it's timeless, that space. And, and that's kairos time. That starts with a C. Well, you can write it with a C. You can do it with a K as well, but we'll do CH yeah, for Kairos time. And it's that special time. It's the moment of birth or the moment of being, you know, kind of, of a marriage or a death. You know, it's, it's outside of time. It's the, that ecstatic time. It's time when you're in that dreaming liminal space. And it's very healing and often it's gifting, you know, like we kind of are available to other energies and knowings mm. in that time. That would be one of my, ex that, so that's one C, yeah. Okay. Do you have the other one? Do you want to know the other one? Well, sure? I do, I do, but I have some, I have a question about that C. Okay, all right. Do you want Will you, are you going to remember to tell me the 10th? Perhaps. Okay. My question about that C is, in the IFS, like the flow of the model, would you, mm -hmm. would you say we experience that when we're like self with the exile, like the protectors has stepped away and we're witnessing the exile? Do you feel like that's when we experience that? Very often. That's a pretty liminal space, like an in-between space, a fixed space. You know, that relational connection is really palpable and it's a little bit outside of time. But I think it also happens with protectors. You know, when we're really gentle with protectors, when they are in that, oh, you're noticing me? You yeah. really see me? Mm. And then you might slow it down and say, what's that like for you to be with this? What's it like to be noticed? What's it like to be appreciated and really known so deeply? like you are working for the good of this person, working to help doing the very best you can do. Mm. Yeah. We really want to hear it like that and sense it like that. And the part feels you feeling them. And then that's 
amplifies you know, this, this relational looping that we get in that space. So very helpful. Mm. Yeah. yeah. I can feel mm. it as you're talking. I'm like, yeah, that feels so good. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, it does feel good. Mm -hmm. And the other C, I'm going to answer your question, yeah, would be an Italian word, but it still starts with C, which is chiaroscuro. It means light and dark. It's a name of a, an art technique, like an etching, you know, which is just blacks and whites, but, you know, done well and thatched and so on, you create all kinds of tones. And, and I think there's something about that, about being able to be with light and dark and mm. even to have a quality of wistfulness or irony that is also creeps in to really being deeply in self. We can really be with great complexity and we can be with the unfathomable and we can be with what can't even be quite spoken and we can be with adult life, mm. you know, which is full of contradiction, actually. Mm. Yeah, and yeah. talking about like the fires, it's like let's bring that to what's happening right now, mm -hmm. and how that what we've been talking about most of this time, how that would affect the parts of us that are so overwhelmed and terrified. Yeah, yeah. Well, I think the contradiction and being with both, you know, being with this is how it is, and knowing that actually people, you know, in ways we can't even imagine and will be overwhelming to be so displaced, you know, and, and like many people have been. And also to, to know that, you know, we've kind of been living this very incredibly comfortable life for such a long time and to know a bit like, I don't know if you recall, there was a famous novel about the Lotus Eaters. And I, I think, you know, it, it's a sort of a phrase that pops every now and again. It's like, you know, you're living in this dreamy land and, you know, you're kind of almost drunk on the, you know, the sweetness of the perfume of flowers and the easy life and the sun shining and, the, you know, getting down to the water and, just, you know, this is what it's, you know, a lot of living in Australia for many people has been. And, and to recall as well, you know, great sweetness of, you know, that this is also possible. And, and to know that, you know, people are also showing so much courage and connection and compassion to each other at this time of overwhelm. Is, well, is that part of the, the black and the white? like the the tenth c word is that is that part of it i think here's my experience is that as i've got older i've become more available to living with juxtaposition and mm -hmm. contradiction and and i think that's what that points to and and, and uh, you know being able to be with wryness or wistfulness as well as happiness or excitement or content, you know, mm. to have, to know that some things are possible and some things aren't, but if circumstances were different, they would be. Mm. And for us to live with that is, is a real wonderful thing, actually. Mm. I, you know, I, I, I think many of the older cultures of the world have capacity and have learned how to be with the, you know, the, in, just the tension of being alive. We're only here for a short time. How do we live well? How do we uh, give to make, you know, our, our lives rich and, and those that we care for, you know, that we they hopefully have a, you know, a better life than even we had. It's a wonderful aim. Mm. And also to know that maybe you, it's not possible. Mm. You know, maybe. Mm -hmm. And holding yeah. both of those things. Mm. Yes. Yeah. And, that, and that's the kind of ironic, the tension. And, and, and there's a juxtaposition. And I, I guess one of the things that I, I, I hold 
to and I listen for is how two things can be true. Yeah, and that's the attraction of the multiplicity of the mind is that, mm-hmm. that there are inside yeah. of me two things that can be true at the same time. Yeah. Yeah. And younger parts of me don't really like that. You know, younger parts of me really like to be like, that's good. That's bad. Or like that mm-hmm. person is good. That person is bad. Mm-hmm. And so sometimes that doesn't feel super safe. Like I'm, I'm agreeing with you and I'm shaking my head. And then I, I kind of got this feeling of like, you know, that younger parts don't always like that. That feels really mm-hmm. unsafe that two things yeah. can be true at the same time. Or like yeah. that idea of thinking of this bigger picture of the political system and how that contributed to these awful horrors of the fires. And, and then ima- imagining that there is good and there's beauty and there's all, and it's like, ah, uh, no, all those people are bad. Uh, you know, it's like this parts of me have to put them in boxes it, because I feel like that's, I've already said this, but it feels like that's what feels safe to them. Yeah. Does that yeah, make sense? It makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you know, if we think that, you know, we kind of grow in this way of, of this sense making way of, and it's like tree rings, you know, and it's like certain parts are quite, close to the center, young parts, you know, and as the tree grows, there are more rings and, you know, and we grow out concentrically, you know, and we become larger and more available and we can hold more. It's always true that all of those younger parts are still here with us. And we only need to, you know, kind of miss a couple of meals or not get enough sleep or have one too many wines or beers to kind of quickly revert back to some pretty young behaviours. I don't know if that's true for you, but I'll speak for myself. Yeah. No, never. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> but, but, you know, so they're always with us. And, yeah. and it is true for these younger parts of us, they really have a younger way to make sense of the world. And we, we see it in trauma. You know, the sense that was made at the time, not just by the overwhelmed and injured exile, the wounded one, the young one, but also by the protectors that are formed in that moment. And both of them are locked in time. Both of them have a worldview that is about that. T minus one, you know, that's, that's where they stop. You know, that's where the memory often is, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and we have these parts of us and it's not just in trauma because of course there's big T and little T trauma, but also there are events that are memorable because of the emotion that we've held or hold at the time. And sometimes that's a beautiful emotion. Sometimes that's excitement or joy or falling in love or, you know, just being touched by something totally full of awe, like, the natural world mm. or feeling what's what's larger what's broader than us that also plays through us in our life mm. i like the image of the tree mm-hmm. i like that you said something and i had a question and now i lost it i'll have to when i listen to this i'll be like oh that's what i was gonna ask him hmm. but i can't remember what it was now it was a really good question though I'll think we of it later. Just be quiet for a minute. Oh, mm. We could just be quiet for a minute and just wait. That's okay. Mm. Talking about the rings of the tree and the way of making sense. That's what it is. Younger part. That's what it is. It's making sense. Okay. Thank you for saying that. Mm. I was thinking of uh, how important it is for you to make sense mm-hmm. of the world and how that mm. ties back to younger you with a confusion Mm -hmm. and uh just kind of mapping that like younger you with all the confusion and then parts of you that have um pursued all these different amazing intellectual pursuits that you know are huge resume and experiences and bring an ifs to australia and um all the awesome things you're doing and that idea that the the driving force is to make sense Mm. And I was thinking about 
what what's really I think kind of popular right now I think it's from Brene Brown is the idea of the stories we tell ourselves mm -hmm. you know what is the story the parts well she doesn't say it this way but the story the parts telling me and yeah. I was thinking that that's basically what you're saying is it's like what sense did the exile make or what sense did the protector make of this specific you know like the I've heard it before like they're only seeing like one scene of the parade like they're only mm -hmm. seeing that that scene mm -hmm. or we've talked about like they're in a silo and and that they're making sense out of their like limited knowledge and history that's just that one that one thing and like how they make sense of it how my exiles or maybe my protectors i'm not sure but how my parts make sense of something is that like well that person's bad so that's why that happens is because he's a bad guy okay mm -hmm. that actually makes sense to me mm -hmm. yeah yeah it does make sense to that part of you to that, that part way. of me yes yeah. yes sure. given that's what it. they given their limited mm -hmm. view and version of their history and what they're seeing yeah yeah, yeah, that's right. And and because they're very young, that they can also be holding quite tight to that because if you haven't got that, then the world is truly out of control or chaotic or really dangerous. Or if that's not true, what is true? And, you know, uh, and, you know but we find this with our clients who have you know such big stories sometimes and you know i don't know the you know the father who was cruel or abusive is also the father who's loving yeah i was a special one because he picked me and yeah that's yeah. right yeah but also maybe he really was loving too definitely you know, you know they're not exclusive yeah? yeah and it may be there was grooming and the specialness and so on but you know it may be that the other thing is also true and life is very variegated it, it's layered you know this chiaroscuro thing it's really it's there you know like like right next to the hurt you have love and it's so confusing to our young parts and also, there are older parts that are able to hold the complexity. In a way, I, I, I think self has, you know, I, I really value it as the expression of differentiation of us as an individual. That's one end of the telescope. The other end of the telescope is a connection to something that we can't comprehend that is larger than us, that wants us to live life and to be, you know, kind of every possible thing we can be to bring our gifts forward and to not live this diminished life, but to amplify light and, and love in the world. Even if we feel, I think that, that there are parts of us that could feel diminished by what's happening in our climate, that parts mm. can be yeah. frozen, paralyzed because of mm -hmm. the climate issues and what's happening in Australia is, you know, triggering lots mm. of potentially terrified parts yeah, around yeah. climate change. Yes. So I wrote down this time so I don't forget it. When you said, I'm going to back you up, when you said next to hurt is love, and sometimes they can be right next to each other, and I thought... You know, if I have protector parts that numb because of the hurt, the exile yeah. hurt, mm -hmm. numb me so that I don't feel hurt, then I mm -hmm. often then don't, ha not that I don't have love, but that then it's harder for me to have love yeah. or connection that way because I'm so protected against mm -hmm. the hurt. Yes. That's it. I, and I just thought, oh, okay, well, that makes, that makes a ton of sense that if I'm cutting, if I'm protecting protecting from the hurt and if love is right next to it then i'm not able to experience i think that's that's the thing about self not that this is new but i think that's really comes up for me is that that if self is driving the bus we have choice yeah and so I have, a, I have a choice to love or i have the flexibility if i'm overwhelmed with parts that are terrified because of the climate then mm. then i don't have i don't have choice to have a full to have love and compassion i'm just paralyzed by fear yeah well that sounds like you know young parts are really flooding the system and 
at one level, you haven't got choice at that moment. You know, you're really, you know, the, the young ones are driving the bus or conducting the orchestra or, you know, however. And that's how it is. When they do feel, you know, the it's like all the little kids are kind of running around in the room screaming and like an adult walks in and they can calm down. Mm. And we need an adult in the room, mm-hmm. in our inner room, as much as in our outer stages and in our, you know, parliaments and governments. It's wonderful when there's an adult exactly. there. Right. You know, right. It really calms everyone down. And I guess, you know, I, I, I do see an international campaign to distress the children in all mm. of us. It's happening in all these different countries. And it's, you know, it's, it's really very worrying to parts of it. And yet, in a way, it's a very visible pattern. Once you see it, you can't unsee it. You go, oh, okay, so there are, here are all the inflaming, uh, endless, you know, kind of uh, social media posts, you know, to, you know, you blame and get angry. And, and it's like, yeah, there's a lot to be angry about. But when you just have one lot of people getting more extreme and the other lot of people get more extreme, and then there's less and less common ground, and when you have leaders who amplify the division, it's kind of like our systems, uh, you know, as, as societies and communities and organisms, individuals, you know, we just get inflamed and we're in this fight, flight, reactivity that sees everything that's not immediately recognisable as a threat. We're, we're flooded with protectors, but... You know, when we have an adult available, when we have self available, and I think this is, you know, the one, you know, it's a, such a gift that Dick Schwartz has given the world in some language for this. I guess I want to really just, you know, stop and mention, you know, he's really been a wonderful thief from all of the best households. He's <laughs> gone and stolen all, all of their best stuff and, you know, set up this kind of you know, lawn sale, you know, for us to come and just grab a bit of. And so, you know, to really just have the sense that much is also possible Mm. when there's an adult in the room and we bring self and kindness and a, a kind of spaciousness, you know, of differentiation of internal, uh, capacity and, aliveness to our own experience which as we get more comfortable with that gets more complex and more elaborate and more tones of gray and and i i I guess i want to hold and i'm aware we're probably coming to the end of our time but you know just the last thing to say is I, i don't think the climate is the climate change is 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 a done deal you know i don't think the final sheet is in. It's what we do. It, it's how we hold space for what else can be now and how we get really motivated and bring the best of ourselves mm. and make space for what hasn't even been said yet or known yet or the science that hasn't been finished or the invention that hasn't been made or the higher energies and frequencies that want to be known on this plane we make space for all of that mm-hmm. it's almost like self is more powerful than the parts of others that are trying to get our kids the kids all in a in a frenzy of in a frenzy activation of fight and flight that's right like the self energy in all of us is more mm-hmm. powerful than that i think that's our invitation as yeah ifs practitioners and people who have a practice you know to say you know none of us know what will come that's the truth but to know that we're here now and for some people it's like oh we chose to be here now at this time are we here for the rebirth or to lay out the corpse i'm not sure but let's be open to that i think joanna macy said that and it really stays with me that there's an aliveness to us being here now and how do we bring that self energy forward in the world 
for ourselves, for those who are close to us and for those in our communities and for those who are on the other side of the world and who we don't know and will never meet face to face. That's beautiful. And that brings us back to the beginning, which is what we can do. And that's, mm-hmm. that's the answer right there. You just said it is being in self, self energy in my own system and in my household and in my community and with the people that I work with and to the lady at the grocery store, the bank and all over the world. And all over our blue planet. Yeah. Yeah. Well, thank you for meeting with me. Yeah, yeah, it was really great to talk again. Look forward, you know, kind of uh, whenever the next time is. Thanks, Simon. It's really beautiful. Thank you, Tim. See you, bud. Okay, bud. See you later, alligator. <laughs> Do they say see? You? In a no, while. I say crocodile. see. Yeah. So let's try it again. See you yeah. later, alligator. In a while, crocodile. I think that's it. it. Yeah. That's it. See ya. Bye, Simon. Bye. Thanks for hanging out today. If you like this episode, make sure you subscribe. And if you really like this episode, share it with a friend and leave a review. You can follow me on Instagram at IFS Tammy and join our community on Facebook at the One Inside Podcast. Talk to you next time. episode was sponsored by Brighter Vision. What's the point of having a beautiful website if it doesn't attract the clients you want to see? As the worldwide leaders of website design for therapists, Brighter Vision sees this issue happen way too often. A nice looking website doesn't equate to a successful website. The truth is, your current website might even be turning off potential clients. That's where Brighter Vision comes in. Brighter Vision's team of website designers will create a website that is centered around attracting and retaining your ideal client so that you can have a nice looking website as well as a successful one. Better yet, Brighter Vision is offering $100 off exclusively for listeners of the One Inside podcast. To take advantage of this offer, simply go to brightervision.com backslash inside. Again, that's brightervision.com backslash inside.